Hello, this is Jared Walton with Tom's Hardware. SSDs using the new Fizon E31T controller could be just what you've been waiting for, offering high performance, good power efficiency, and PCIe 5.0 levels of bandwidth. They're not going to be the raw performance champions, but they'll be good for any sort of system, desktop, laptop, or even a PlayStation 5. Unlike Fizon's earlier E26 controller or Silicon Motion's new SM2508, the E31T wants to please everyone rather than just enthusiasts. In many ways, that will be more impactful for the market in the long run. Fizon has become the undisputed leader in consumer SSD controller design in the past few years. It was first to market with PCI Express 5.0, beating the competition by more than a year. It used to be the purveyor of low-end solutions, but that changed in the PCIe 4.0 era. Now, Fizon-based SSDs are ubiquitous. Today's review is technically more of a preview since the E31T won't be available at retail for a bit longer. The final finishing touches still need to happen, along with ironing out a few issues. But on the whole, the engineering sample we received feels ready to go. Not only is the E31T controller new, but this will also be our first look at BICS8 flash memory in an SSD. Specifications indicate there will be 1TB and 2TB capacities with maximum sequential read speeds of up to 10,300MB per second and writes at up to 8600MB per second. Random read and write speeds are also excellent at up to 1300K and 1500K IOPS. We suspect 4TB drives will exist as well, but those may take a while longer to arrive. The controller could reach up to 8TB with the right flash, but 2TB tends to be the sweet spot right now for this level of hardware, offering a good blend of performance and capacity. Retail drives using the E31T should have the standard 5-year warranty with 600TB or more of writes per terabyte of capacity. The preview drive we received doesn't have much to discuss. There's the SSD controller, two NAND flash packages, and a PMIC. That's a power management integrated circuit. It's a single-sided drive providing for maximum compatibility with a host of devices. It's theoretically possible to do a 4TB single-sided drive as well with four NAND packages, but we'll have to wait for such designs to appear using this controller. Other 4TB single-sided drives are already available like the 990 Pro, but so far none of those are PCI Express 5.0 SSDs. The Fizon E31T controller likely has a lot in common with the E27T. We've tested and reviewed several drives with that controller, and it's a great solution for budget-friendly PCIe 4.0 SSDs. Before the E27T, Fizon also had the E21T, which we've seen in a lot of M.2 2230 models. These controllers have the same basic hardware, with the chief difference being higher clock speeds on the microprocessor. These are needed to keep up with increasing bus speeds, providing higher bandwidth from the latest flash solutions. The E31T isn't just a PCIe 5.0 revision of the E27T though. It has an upgrade in the LDPC error correction, which can heighten performance and or NAND flash endurance, and it's a necessary step as IO speed increases, and also important as we begin to see more 4-bit QLC flash, which is more sensitive to wear than 3-bit TLC flash. But the biggest change is that the E31T uses TSMC's newer N7 7 nanometer process node instead of the older 12 nanometer FinFET node. N7 promises far better efficiency and higher performance, allowing for a PCI Express 5.0 SSD without any heatsink. The faster controller also helps get more performance out of a four channel design like the E31T. More powerful controllers like Fizon's E26 have twice as many channels along with DRAM. They also use a lot more power. Getting higher relative levels of performance out of the DRAMless E31T requires faster flash, in this case, 3600 megatransfers per second BICS8 TLC flash. That means higher clocks and that translates to higher power consumptions for the controller, but the move to N7 keeps the E31T at similar power levels and heat levels to existing PCI Express 4.0 SSDs while offering a clear step up in performance. This is also the first time we've had a chance to see BICS8 flash in action. It comes with 218 layers and four planes using enhanced bonding technology that continues the trend of improving power efficiency from circuit under array. It's purportedly using a wafer bonded design reminiscent of YMTC's breakthrough X tacking technology, which provides one way of handling the move to higher layer counts. 
The move from two planes, common with BICS-5 flash, to four means higher bandwidth from increased parallelization. BICS-8 also promises to have higher density QLC flash, but this particular drive uses TLC. Based on information released by WD and Kyoshia, the read latency on this flash should be equal to or better than any other flash we've tested to date. One possible reason BICS-8 performs so differently is because of the subplane design. This is something Samsung did a while back with its flash, splitting the typical 16 kilobyte pages into two 8 kilobyte subpages, while still using an edge rather than center decoder. A center decoder design can further reduce latency, but the subplane architecture could compensate for now. The fact that E31T can push so much performance at one terabyte, even with dense flash, is possibly due to this design. It's a pretty big change for BICS in general, with further refinements still possible in the future. But enough preamble, let's move on to the performance comparisons and benchmarks. We want to see how the E31T stacks up against the existing crop of PCI Express 5.0 drives, so we've got the E26 based Crucial T705, T700, and the right optimized Sabrent Rocket 5. We also have the ADATA Legend 970 Pro that uses the Integrate IG5666 controller, and then the Silicon Motion SM2508 preview, though so far we've only tested that particular drive in a 1TB capacity. We've also included top representatives of the best PCI Express 4.0 SSDs like the SK Hynix Platinum P41, Samsung 990 Pro, WD Black SN850X, and Crucial T500. And from the budget range, we have the Silicon Power US75 that uses Maxio's MAP1602 controller with TLC NAND, as well as Samsung's 990 EVO. Starting with 3 Mark, the Fizon E31T's performance looks good, but not great. It beats most of the PCI Express 4.0 drives, basically matching the T500. If you're looking for a fast game drive, the E31T will do the job, and Fizon's direct storage optimized firmware can help. It doesn't quite keep up with the fastest PCI 5.0 SSDs that have DRAM and reach the full interface bandwidth, but the E31T should end up being cost competitive with some of the best last generation drives. PC Mark 10 echoes what we saw in 3D Mark. The E31T doesn't put up earth shattering numbers, but it tops all the PCIe 4.0 models while offering improvements in efficiency that we'll discuss more in a moment. Turning over to some PlayStation 5 testing, you wouldn't normally put a PCIe 5.0 drive in the PS5, but the E31T might be an exception to that rule. There have been some minor changes in our PS5 testing, specifically, one of the games we use got updated and so the total file size has increased, but the values for our manual transfers to and from the M.2 drive still land within a small range. Most of the faster drives come close to the PCIe 4.0 interface limit on the PS5 retest, while the write to and read from M.2 tests tend to encounter other bottlenecks like the PS5 internal SSD's encryption algorithm except the E31T breaks the mold with its bandwidth in our transfer from M.2 test, rising above all previously tested SSDs. This was unexpected, and we had to double check that it wasn't caused by a PS5 firmware update, but the results still stand. Several other recently tested SSDs that use the same system firmware actually fall off the pace, but we checked and rechecked the E31T numbers, and that 264 megabyte per second result is legit. It's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but drives based on the E31T could become a great option for the PS5, if the price is right. Next up we have DiskBench, which measures real-world file transfer rates. These can vary significantly from drive to drive, especially when factoring in PCIe 5.0 drives that have higher bandwidth. As expected, the E31T lands above the PCIe 4.0 SSDs, but below the faster 5.0 drives. If you're the type of user who transfers files around a lot, this could make a difference in daily operations due to lower waiting times. You might also want to put this drive into an enclosure, but at these speeds, you'd be looking at USB 4 or Thunderbolt enclosures, which can support the host memory buffer feature as well. An E31T based drive might be a great choice there because it's more efficient and won't overheat, unlike previous PCIe 5.0 options. Sustained performance may be lower, however, which will be reflected in our right saturation testing. Moving over to some synthetic tests, the E31T performs as expected with writes in ATTO, 
but it shows some variance when it comes to reads. Given the performance levels demonstrated in other tests, we can chalk this up to our sample being a work in progress. It's likely due to the controller firmware, possibly amplified by the new BICS8 flash. We didn't see any real world impact from this, but our results here show that there are still some kinks to work out. Crystal Disk Mark is a good way to check maximum sequential performance and random IOPS with good results for the E31T. It has more bandwidth than PCIe 4.0 SSDs like the 990 Pro and T500, but its sequential read performance at a Q depth of 1, and this is a common workload for many things like game or app loading, falls behind the T500 and the Platinum P41. There isn't a huge difference here, but we can hypothesize that the T500's six-plane flash and the Platinum P41's less dense flash dies both enable more interleaving for this particular workload. This dovetails well with our expectations mentioned earlier, which is to say that the BICS8 flash may have some architectural optimizations for smaller I.O. Crystal Dismark's QD1 random test proves this out, with the E31T scoring the lowest 4KB QD1 random read latency in our testing to date. The Integrate IG5666, used in the ADATA Legend 970 Pro, basically matches the E31T in the QD1 test, but it's pretty remarkable for a DRAMless drive, demonstrating once and for all that the era of needing DRAM and a full 8 channels for impressive SSD performance has ended. But don't get too caught up with these synthetic test results. Real-world performance differs from synthetic testing, especially for workloads that fall out of the temporary cache. Additionally, many day-to-day -day workloads involve larger I.O. and sequential workloads even where you wouldn't expect it. Our final performance test is with our brutal write saturation benchmark, where we pound the SSDs with continuous 1 megabyte writes for 30 minutes or more. The 2TB E31T writes in the single-bit PSLC mode at up to 8.8GB per second for around 50 seconds, indicating a cache size of around 440GB. That's not as large as it could be, since a 2TB TLC flash in PSLC mode would allow for up to around 680GB, but it's still a very large cache. Fizon has generally been conservative with its caching in recent designs, possibly in part because the Crucial T500 and its E25 controller had inconsistent write performance due to having a large cache. Once the E31T leaves the PSLC mode, it's a direct to TLC mode at around 1.5 gigabytes per second. This is significantly slower than what we would expect from the flash, and it may simply be a side effect of avoiding a slow folding state for as long as possible. That folding state does occur, however, and when the drive has to empty the PSLC cache while continuing to handle incoming writes, it drops to less than 800 megabytes per second. We suspect the flash could provide for higher sustained writes with the right combination of controller and firmware, but it doesn't make much sense to optimize a drive like this in that manner. It's intended more as a daily driver and something that can work everywhere, rather than as a best performance at all costs sort of SSD. That latter category continues to be served by Fizon's E26 controller. Wrapping up with our power testing, the E31T with its four channel DRAMless design built on TSMC N7 ends up being super efficient, even when compared to the Silicon Motion SM2508 that offers half the capacity. It's the most efficient SSD we've ever tested so far, and the controller and flash look like a winner. Drives using the E31T and BICS8 flash will work in laptops, consoles, HTPCs, and just about anywhere else. The drive also runs relatively cool, reaching a maximum of 56 degrees Celsius in our testing. While the SM2508 could potentially be used in a laptop, the E31T is the first PCIe 5.0 controller that will be put into drives that actually can be safely used without a heatsink, including laptops. Of course, our temperatures do use a well-ventilated desktop system, so we'd expect higher thermals in the laptop, but that happens with PCIe 4.0 drives as well. Overall, the Fizon E31T SSD is an accomplishment only slightly dimmed by the recent sampling of SMI's faster SM2508. These are two amazing platforms coming out at nearly the same time, promising two very different things. While the SM2508 is the more traditional 8-channel DRAM-equipped powerhouse, the E31T is a more accessible 4-channel DRAMless design that's for everyone. Both have a place in the market, and it's great to see more efficient PCIe 5.0 options coming to the table. 
This is especially true when looking at the Fizon E26 and Inugrit IG5666 controllers, both of which require heat sinks to function properly, making them fit almost exclusively for enthusiast desktop PCs. While the SM2508 we tested could be used in a laptop, the E31T is the first PCIe 5.0 drive we've seen that should actually be recommended for such use. It could even work well in laptops that still top out at PCIe 4.0 speeds as the already excellent power efficiency would be even higher in 4.0 mode. Plenty of good PCIe 4.0 SSDs and controllers already exist, like Maxio's MAP 1602 with YMTC Flash or Fizon's E27T controller that also works wonders in drives like the Sabrent Rocket 4. But those are all 12 nanometer designs with their own advantages and disadvantages. The 7 nanometer node ultimately leaves the E31T a cut above the rest if you want the newest and shiniest hardware. At the end of the day, we have to sing the praises of the E31T. It's powerful, it's efficient, and it's the future. With availability and reasonable pricing, it will become the backbone of new builds everywhere. We'll eventually need to see 4 terabyte drives, and Fizon knows this, but for now 2 terabyte remains the sweet spot and our sample performed admirably. The E31T doesn't have the raw bandwidth of 8 channel solutions, but the use of new flash and a newer process node result in an extremely efficient and effective platform. If you're looking for a fast drive with no drawbacks, anything built on this technology should be an easy pick. Now we just need to wait a little longer for the retail drives to arrive, which should hopefully happen within the next few months. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.